Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, we've got a special presentation for tonight. Uh, we're looking to, the Western Health Department is looking to do additional programming on reducing stress through healthy eating. Uh, my name is Jeff Stevens, I'm the Health Director. And we have brought in Cheryl Major, who's going to give us a great presentation on how we can do some of this to help improve our lives just a little bit with what we eat. So I'll turn it over to you, Cheryl. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for coming. Welcome, everybody. And um, I just want to begin by saying this is thinstronghealthy.com. That is my home on the web. That's my main health blog. And let's, who am I? And what does CNWC stand for? I have a sheep there holding the question mark because I actually do have sheep, so I'm kind of partial to the little cartoon sheep. So I had to, had to put that in there. I'm actually a realtor with Coldwell Banker here in town, and I've been a realtor in this area for more than 25 years. In addition to that, I am a certified nutrition and wellness consultant and I have a degree in education from Boston University, so I can tell you about my personal experience and teach you what I've learned, but I'm not a doctor, so I can't say I can cure you, I can't give you medical advice. I have to do the disclaimer, so we've got that out of the way. I struggled with depression for decades. I became depressed, chronically depressed, when I was 12 years old. And I lived with depression for decades and decades for most of my adult life. And I'm very open about this. It was a hard thing for me to come out as a depressed person and I actually did it after I had gotten better. But there's so much struggle around depression and anxiety and stress that I felt it was worth the risk of opening myself up and letting people know that I struggled for so long and that I was able to make a difference in my life and I want to share with as many people as I can touch how that happened. So I changed how I eat and I did that to help someone else. In 2012, my husband Rob and I were out in California and we were at one of my niece's weddings and he had been having really, really bad side effects. He, had, he was borderline diabetic. He had to test his sugar twice a day. He had uh, brain fog. He's an engineer, so that's not a good thing to have brain fog and cognitive, cognitive stuff going on when you're an engineer. He was getting cataracts. He had problems with memory. He had muscle weakness. He had nerve pain. And we didn't know what's going on, what was going on, but it was getting very frightening. So when we got back, we, when we got back, we changed how we ate. And we got rid of sugar, we got rid of processed foods, we got rid of bad fats and excess salt and junk food. And what happened to me was nothing short of a miracle. I cured my depression and I lost 20 pounds without dieting. So what happened to Rob was we were able to back him off the diabetes, we were able to normalize his cholesterol levels, and we did it all by changing how we eat. Now, when he goes for his yearly tests, he's at the high range of normal because it's in his gene pool, but he's still in the range of normal, so he's not on Lipitor anymore, and he was able to back off from the side effects. So I share that with people too because so many people are on cholesterol reducing medicines and unfortunately cholesterol is, is, a, is not the subject for tonight but it, it, it's a misunderstood thing. Cholesterol is really your friend. Your brain is more than 60% fat and it's the diet that we eat that affects our cholesterol and that makes, it, makes us have a problem with it to a large extent. LDL isn't bad, it's what we do with our diet. So as a result of what happened to me, and I haven't struggled with depression for more than six years, I started my blog, thinstronghealthy.com. I went to um, Westford Cat and I, I uh, pitched uh, a program to the wonderful Sarah Fletcher over there and she said, sure, let's give it a try. And I've been doing that for several years. That's also called Thin Strong Healthy. And I also contribute a weekly article to westfordcat.org. I have a new health article every week in there. I also wrote a book. It's a real book. Yay. Eat Your Blues Away, which is what I did. So 
I wrote a book about it because I wanted to share my journey. I'm in the process of writing another book, which is called The Major Method, and that's about how I eat. Because when I tell my story, people say, well, what diet did you follow? And it's not a diet. It's not keto or Mediterranean or paleo. It's what worked for me with all of the research and all of the trial and error that I did. So I'm doing that to share with everybody what I did. Because, I mean, for me, diet is a four-letter word, and it is. But who do you hear say that they're on a diet who looks happy? Not too many people. It speaks deprivation. It speaks temporariness. It speaks pretty much misery. And if you, if you affect a, a lifestyle that supports your, your mental and physical wellness, it's a whole different thing than if you're trying to diet to lose weight. weight. And frankly, when you eat to be well, your body finds its own perfect weight. It's, it's really quite remarkable. So uh, let's see. I have to remember to go in the right direction here. So I am on a mission to share what I've learned with as many people as I possibly can because it's relevant for everyone. What, what has happened to me is important for people even if you don't deal with depression. It, what happened to me empowers everyone to improve their health and wellness, both mental and physical. And I am on a mission to share that with as many people as I can in as many ways as I can. So what about today? What does all this mean for you? And how does all of this relate to stress? So the goals for this evening are to talk about stress, what causes it, what happens when you get stressed, and then to give you some ideas how you actually can eat to relieve stress. And that includes things that you should eat, it includes things that you shouldn't eat as well. So what is stress? Stress actually, I want to uh, share a couple things here. First thing I want to share is um, from Jennifer Haith. She's a cardiologist at the Center for Women's Cardiovascular Health at New York Presbyterian Columbia University. And she says, quote, stress is less about any one event than it is about your ability to cope with unexpected difficult events. And I want to say that again because it's really important. Stress is less about any one event than it is about your ability to cope with unexpected difficult events. When you let stress become chronic, ignoring it instead of coping with it, that's when it starts to take a toll on your emotional and your physical health. And that's what we're going to discuss tonight. We're going to discuss ways that you can eat so that you're better able to cope with stress. We all deal with stress, you know? It's just, it's just a fact of life. So, um, so let's see. Uh, do I have things out of order here? Nope, I don't. So what is stress? Stress is actually... Um, comes in two forms. It can benefit you. It can motivate you to do better, to achieve a goal. It can help you get a promotion. It can help you um, graduate. It can help you uh, do something that you need a little push. You need some adrenaline to get it done. And that's not a bad thing. But what happens is when you have to get up and run away from that tiger, if you're in that mode all the time, that's when you're going to get in trouble. So it's, stress is a normal biological reaction to a real or perceived danger. It's a feeling of emotional or physical tension, and it's a situation that triggers a biological response. So in the old days when we were in the cave, and the tiger would come after us. Our goal was to get up and to run away. And so that kind of stress prepares us to survive. And stress triggers the secretion of hormones, but when it becomes the chronic stress, it, again, it's not good for you. So the fight or flight hormone, the first one we're gonna talk about is adrenaline. And that's the one that makes you get up and flee from the tiger. That's the one that gets your heart rate going. That's the one that makes your breathing fast. I'm sure we can all think of an event. The one that comes to mind for me is 
driving down Route 9 in winter in a snowstorm and hitting a slick patch and doing a fishtail and ending up against the guardrail with oncoming traffic coming toward me. And my heart was going like crazy. I'm sure you can relate. Things like this happen to all of us. And you're, you know, you got to calm down, and you and you just you you you're you're gasping for air, and your heart has to settle down. That's what adrenaline does, and they call it an adrenaline ru adrenaline rush. So that's one of the um, that's one of the the hormones, adrenaline. The other one, and the primary stress hormone is cortisol. And cortisol relates to sugar. It, it affects how our bodies use glucose. It raises glucose in the bloodstream and it helps your brain use glucose effectively. But over time, it can change the response of your immune system. And over time, it can cause you harm. So why is stress harmful? And what are some of the effects of stress over time. If you have stress that just goes on and on and on and there's no let up, what it does is it causes inflammation in your body. And inflammation, they're doing a lot of studies now on inflammation. And infl inflammation is now believed to be the root cause of chronic disease and premature aging. And I didn't connect the dots, going back to the depression thing for, for a minute, I didn't know, people would say to me, oh, you got rid of your depression, because you, I, I haven't been depressed in over six years. And I have to tell you, this is so empowering, and not just for me, it's for anyone who wants to make a change in blood pressure, in cholesterol, in depression, in weight, in how you handle stress. You are so powerful if you give your body the tools that it needs. Your body wants to fix you and we mess it up all the time. We have to learn how to eat so that we let our bodies do what they're designed to do. I got off task a little bit here, so let me find myself again. So back with inflammation. I didn't realize, people would say to me, what was it that you took off your plate that got rid of the depression? And I honestly didn't know. Was it sugar? Was it um, flour? Was it gluten? Was it dairy? Because I got rid of a lot of stuff. Was it junk food? I got rid of a lot of stuff and I honestly didn't know what it was and I was really and truly too afraid to mess around and to experiment with putting things back because I had a totally new life. And then last year I read an article by uh, Dr. Kelly Brogan who is a women's uh, psychologist in New York City and she was raised in an allopathic or traditional um, medicine schooled in a traditional medicine way and then when she got into her practice over time she started to see where things were more connected than she had been taught so she, she became more of a functional psychologist where everything is connected kind of like I'm talking about now where food um, affects everything and she had this blog post and the upshot of it was that how you eat causes inflammation and inflammation in your gut, because uh, have most of you heard that your gut is now thought to be your second brain or designated to be your second brain? And the vagus nerve is the main nerve that connects your gut with your brain. You can get a stomach ache. You don't really get a brain ache. You get a headache, but that's vascular most of the time. So what she explained was the inflammation in your stomach is transmitted via the vagus nerve to your, your brain, and your brain wow, we're, we're inflamed up here, and it manifests in many people as depression. And what I realized when I read that was what I did with my diet was I created a low inflammation diet, a low inflammatory diet for myself, and I reduced the inflammation in my body, and that's what cured my depression. I can't say I can cure other depression, but I will tell you, I cured my depression. I cured my depression. And I'm no angel. I mean, if, if I start to eat widely, I can start to feel a little funky, and then I tighten it right up, and I'm fine. So inflammation is a huge factor. Um, and uncontrolled inflammation um, can result from cortisol uh, levels being amped up. And chronic inflammation is manifested by when we start to get that belly fat 
that's so prevalent today in people. If you watch, I mean, I love to watch Turner Classic movies, the old black and whites. And if you look at people from even the 30s and 40s, before we really started eating a ton of processed foods, and you look at pictures from the 19-teens and the 1920s, people didn't have the gut and belly fat that we deal with now. It's our diet that's doing that to us, and dieting is not the answer. Weight is not the problem. You, your weight is not the problem. What you're eating is the problem. So this belly fat, this roundness that we deal with, it's, you kind of would think that it's flat on the inside and it's just round on the outside. It's not. It's round. So it's pressing on your organs, and that's not healthy either. So what this belly fat, visceral fat as inflammation, chronic inflammation does is it pushes us toward type 2 diabetes, pushes us toward heart, and pushes us toward depression. So sources of stress are personal and they're endless. And Stress can be something like what I'm doing now. I happen to like public speaking. Um, it's well known that a lot of people would rather die than do it. Um, that's not to say that I don't get nervous, because I do, but I enjoy it very much. Um, other people just have different things that they like or that they don't like. Um, it can be a job that you detest. It can be a dead-end relationship that you're stuck in. It can be financial stresses, teenagers. It can be listening to the news. Um, there's a whole host of, of reasons why we get stressed. So stress affects us differently as far as our eating is concerned. Some of us, when we get stressed, we're stress eaters. We're under stress. We go for the bag of Oreos. We go for the bag of chips. And I'm not talking three or six. I'm talking a sleeve or the bag or the bag of chips. And I've done it too. And then others of us just shut down and we just, we eat too little, we just don't eat enough. And then a lot of us, when we get stressed, we eat the wrong foods, and those are the foods that actually exacerbate our stress and don't help us recover from it and fulfill the prophecy of the chronic stress that we deal with um, so much in our world. So during a stressful episode, your body is preparing you for another tiger to show up. It's trying to get you to replenish your stores of glucose. It's trying to help you to replenish your, your fat stores so that you can escape if that second tiger shows up. So high sugar, high fat equals energy to run from the tiger. So we go for things like ice cream. That's perfect. It's, it's, it's fat, it's sugar, and it meets all those needs that we're being driven toward. So what kind of foods actually increase our stress? Foods like ice cream. We just talked about how sugar, fat, um, so ice cream is something that we go for. Coffee is something we go for. And coffee's kind of a complex subject because coffee actually, if you suffer from depression, coffee can improve your dopamine production. So if you're dealing with depression, just like if you're dealing with stress, I mean, dopamine can help you feel better when you're under stress. Coffee is something that in the short term is gonna make you feel somewhat better. On the flip side of that, coffee with the caffeine is gonna make you more nervous and possibly make you more stressed. Some people are more susceptible to the stress of that. And also, coffee stimulates the production of cortisol. And this is the biggest argument against coffee. If you're stressed and your cortisol production is amped up, it doesn't make any sense for you to be drinking coffee that's going to increase your cortisol production. It's counterproductive. Is that the happy oh, that's a very interesting question. We're going to address that in just a second. Thank you for that, Helen. That's a very good question. Um, I'm going to I'm going to put you off for a minute because I got a nice little slide for that one. Chinese food. That's another thing that's wonderful. I love Chinese food. I don't think I've had it in at least a year because it's not good for me. I know that. Chinese food is high in sugar. It's high in bad fat. 
Um, they use MSG, which gives some people seizures. Other people, it makes them stuffy. It gives migraines. Um, it can cause a whole host of, of allergic reactions. Um, and it also, also Chinese food, along with MSG, um, the, the sodium content in the sauces, like the soy sauce and the teriyaki sauce, the, the sodium content is very high and the ex excess salt is going to increase your blood pressure and that's not going to help you relax, that's going to amp you up. Next on our list, pressed, freshly pressed fruit juice. Now this one you may think is kind of strange because fruit juice is a healthy thing. Fruit juice, if it's not in the fruit, is sugar. It's just like having sugar. There's nothing to slow down the metabolization of sugar. And when you ingest sugar, if you're not gonna go run a mile or you're not gonna do something that's very active, if you're not burning it, anything excess is gonna be stored as excess fat cells. And those fat cells, every new fat cell has a blood supply and your heart's gonna have to pump harder to supply blood to those new fat cells. So for instance, in the morning, I'll have a half an orange, I'll slice it up. I don't drink orange juice anymore and don't think I don't love it. It just doesn't love me back. Because if I'm eating an orange, first of all, I'm getting vitamin C, which I'm getting in the, or in the orange juice too, but I'm getting the pulp, I'm getting, the, I'm getting ec extra vitamins that aren't processed out, but the pulp helps, the, the fiber helps slow down the absorption of the sugar. So eating an apple is better than having apple juice. Eating berries is better than eating berry juice. Freshly pressed juice is just a good thing to avoid. So when you say freshly pressed, you're meaning like the stuff you buy in the store. Like for example, I, I like grapes at home, and I just process some grape juice, no sugar, nothing, just water, berries, oil, and strain up the juice. So I know sugar, grapes have a lot of sugar. Yeah, they do. So I dilute it like with water, half and half, when I bring it in. Yeah. But I mean, it's not like it's got you know, additional process things in it at all. It's just my own homemade stuff. If you're diluting it, you're probably okay. And one of the things that I like to have people do is use sparkling water. We'll talk about soda in a little bit, actually, at the bottom. We'll talk about it right now instead. Um, instead of soda, because soda just isn't good for you, and it doesn't matter if it's diet or if it has real sugar in it. It's not good for you. So what, when I'm coaching my, 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 my health coaching clients, I have them get a soda stream machine and make their own or just buy sparkling water. Put lemon in, crushed berries, and put that in. If you want a little bit of juice, put a tablespoon or two in, but dilute it like you're doing. You know, but you know how you buy freshly pressed juice at the juice bars? That's just pure sugar. That is pure sugar. There's no pulp in there. So, um, Wine or liquor, when you're stressed, there's nothing like a glass of wine to relax and just whew. And most of us have done it. And the downside is that there's sugar in that. And also um, alcohol is a depressant. So if you're feeling stressed and you're feeling badly because you're feeling stressed, it's not gonna help you feel better. It, al drinking alcohol in the evening can also interrupt your sleep pattern. You can wake up because of what it does to your sugar levels. So not a particularly good choice. Um, soda diet are regular. I just wanna revisit that a little bit again because um, diet soda, a lot of people, I have a friend who's diabetic and when we go to lunch, she has two or three diet Cokes and I really try not to be the food police. I've been accused. So I've really kind of cranked back on that. But when you drink diet soda, the aspartame, the NutraSweet, whatever it is that's in there, it slows down your metabolism. So when people go through the drive through and they get the burger and the fries and they get the Diet Coke or the Diet Pepsi or the Diet whatever to try to balance the harm that they're doing with the sugar and the bad fats, it's not working because it tamps down, it slows down your metabolism. And even more important for somebody who deals with my stuff, my depression is, or my former depression, is that a few servings of um, an artificial sweetener can trigger a bout of depression. It can trigger a bout of depression. So if you're in any way prone to depression or prone to depressive episodes, even if it's not chronic, 
you want to avoid that stuff. It's, it's just not good for you. I mean, in general, it's, it's just really not a good choice. <clears throat> so basic rules for coping with stress. You know, it seems like we always go after sugar, first of all, and for a good reason. Like I said before, your weight isn't the problem. Sugar is the problem. And sugar affects everything. Sugar amps up your inflammation, and that increases your stress. That contributes to, to, um, that contributes to depression, uh, to more stress, to all kinds of ills. Um, and again, chronic inflammation is the root cause of disease and premature aging, so you want to avoid sugar. And it's a tough one because it's in everything. And even, even things that didn't used to have sugar, I mean, I challenge you, I challenge you to go to the grocery store and find a cracker that doesn't have sugar. Find a salad dressing that doesn't have sugar. Find a chip that doesn't have sugar. And I've given you in, in the, the handouts, I've given you, I alphabetized it because I had to do that. I, I had to put it in order so people would find it. But um, 60 plus names of sugar because they don't make it easy for us to save ourselves. I mean, treacle? Have you ever heard of treacle? I mean, I, had you heard of treacle, Helen? Yeah. Really? Well, I read British novels and it's a honey British people, they call it treacle. So oh, do they really? Yeah, the British store down here in Westford sells it and it says treacle on it. You can see it's honey. I did, thank you for sharing <laughs> that with me. I did not know. I did not know. <laughs> but there are 60 plus names of sugar and there are probably more. So I give that to you so you can stick it, fold it up, stick it in your purse, and when you read those ingredient labels, go through and look for some of those because the sugar is in there. What's xylitol? I see you have that in your recipe. Yeah, xylitol is, um, xylitol is the only type of sweetener that doesn't give you a glucose bump. Is that um, like stevia? Stevia, your body looks at stevia, reacts to stevia the same as any sugar. So I can add stevia. Yeah. Xylitol is the only one that does not give you that kind of a, a glucose bump. Um, and I use it in tea, I use it in baking. The, there are a couple of caveats with, um, with xylitol. If you have a dog in your house and you use xylitol, you have to be very, very careful because dogs cannot process xylitol. It is toxic to the point that it, it will, it's fatal to them. So you have to be very careful if you have a dog around. Also, China now, in its infinite wisdom, has come up with, with a cheap imitation of xylitol that they also call, call xylitol. If you see anything from China, I urge you to be very careful with your purchase just because their food um, vetting, the vetting of their, their, their food production is, is, is sketchy. Um, and they, the xylitol that they produce is, is from corn, and corn is largely GMO now, thanks to Monsanto and GMO seeds. So the, the real xylitol is made from hardwood, mostly birchwood trees, birch trees rather, um, and it, it doesn't have the strong taste that stevia has. But again, it doesn't give you that glucose bump, and that's why you see it in that, um, in that recipe. So you can use it with confidence. I mean, you don't want to use it to an extreme, but it does, it's not going to give you the reaction that your body gets to everything else on that page of 60 plus. Can I ask a quick question? Please. What about ch chicory root? Is that a sweetener? Chicory root? Yeah. I have not heard chicory root as a sweetener. I've heard it used as kind of a coffee substitute. Oh, I thought that was in that triple zero yogurt, and I was trying to figure out because it had no added sugar, and I was trying to figure out what was the sweetener. Yeah. Well, you might go through now and look at, at at the list and see if there's anything else. But I don't know. I mean, they might use it for a flavoring, but I've never heard of it as a sweet use okay. as a sweetener. I wasn't sure if that was it. Okay. Yeah. No, Sheila, that's a good question. It was a coffee yogurt, was it? <laughs> no, it's vanilla. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Huh. It's a Oikos triple zero. It's zero, um, okay. zero added fat, added zero right. added sugar, and zero okay. artificial sweeteners. Probably I think it has stevia or something. Cause I, I can't stand any of those artificial sweeteners, so I never buy. And I've looked yeah. at that. I think it's 
silver tall or stevia or something. Okay, I'll have to take another look at yeah. it. You, you've got your equipment I, now. I You're thought armed. that that was the, the key. <laughs> You're armed. Because it wasn't low calorie, so mm. it wasn't. Well, was it low calorie? No, no. But, you know, low calorie and, and low fat are not so much the issue. Right. Because f fat isn't the enemy. Healthy fat is your friend. Yeah really because we need fat for memory for cellular function um, the whole thing with Ansel Keys back in the day when he made fat the, the bad guy it was really sugar he cherry-picked the data because the sugar lobby was so strong and there's a book I want to tell you about and if any any books and things like that I, I've got a, a list of books I've got in the menu on thinstronghealthy.com I have a a book uh, pull down or a book page you can go to and there's a wonderful book that was written in 1976, I think it was, by a man named William Dufty, who was one of one of um, Gloria Swanson's several husbands. I think she might have, he might have been the last one, but he she she got him off sugar, and he was a sugar addict. And the the original version of the book that I bought at the time had a picture, it doesn't anymore, but it had a picture of him on the back when he was eating sugar and when he was off sugar. Two completely different looking people. The person who was eating sugar was puffy and, um, you know, pale looking. And the person who had stopped eating sugar was, was slim and his skin was taut. It, it, was, it was stunning, the difference. Um, so Sugar Blues, um, I highly, highly recommend it. It's also interesting because it tells you the history of sugar. It goes back to 1444 when the Portuguese started with the slave trade in sugar, and then the Spanish took over, the Dutch perfected it, and on and on it went. But it goes way back. It's very deep, and it's very powerful. So Ansel Keys cherry-picked because the sugar lobby said, oh, you're not making us the bad guy. But it's not about fat. It's about sugar. So let's talk about which foods are stress busters. So complex carbohydrates are really, really good when you want to get stress under control. You want to stay away from the simple carbs. You want to go with whole grain breads. And I mean whole grain rather than um, whole wheat because whole grain will take um, more, whole grain will take more, uh, effort for your body to process. It's not going to be assimilated, it's not going to be turned into sugar as quickly. So whole grains, whole pasta, uh, steel cut oatmeal is really good. Um, steel cut uh, oatmeal actually boosts levels of serotonin and serotonin is a calming brain chemical. So you know oatmeal kind of feels like comfort food, it, it does to me anyway. But you can um, you can also uh, you know, have fresh berries on it. You can have, and I would encourage you to try almond milk and try taking a break from dairy. And again, I'm not being the food police and saying get off dairy right away. But what I encourage people to do is do small steps that lead to big changes. If you incorporate a little of this and a little of that, pretty soon you're moving in the right direction. You start to feel better, maybe you drop a few pounds, and it's very reinforcing. It's very empowering. And we're much more powerful then we know there's this thing called epigenetics and again I'm digressing a little bit but epigenetics is a study of your genes and it what it, it the, sh the short of it is that our genes don't necessarily dictate what happens to us with our health what dictates what happens to us with our health is whether we surround ourselves with things and whether we eat to turn on the genes that are in our gene pool or whether we eat a low inflammatory diet to keep those genes turned off. So we have tremendous control, we have tremendous power over our health going forward. Whole wheat is really just white bread that's brown. Um, you want it to have wheat berries and you know steel cut oatmeal. You want it to have a lot of fiber and a lot of substance. I mean, I, I make my own bread, I don't buy it. So I know a lot of people um, uh, buy Ezekiel bread, which is, is pretty substantial, I understand. Um, and I also- rye bread, is that, that's rye isn't like a, a whole wheat bread? 
full grain, right? right? Not the way. Not the way they make it. They right? make it's it. almost like brown, white. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Always be suspicious. And I do a whole course on how to read a food label because you don't, you cannot, you would just absolutely be shocked if, I mean, it's not the time or the place right now to, to go into it, but the things that they can put on the front of a label, they don't have to tell the truth there. And they don't even kind of sort of have to tr really tell the truth on the back. You have to figure out how to, how to save yourself. And they, they don't make it easy. Um, so a healthy diet, uh, a healthy diet shores up your, your immune system, and I want to talk a few about a few more um, foods that are stress busters. Oranges, again, getting back to avoiding the fruit juice. Oranges, the fiber slows the absorption of the of the sugar. Spinach and green leafy veggies, and those are high in magnesium. And you know when you get stressed, you get really tired, and you might get a stress headache. Well, magnesium will help with that. Um, and if you don't like spinach, you can eat collard greens, you can eat the wonderful kale, which you have to, you need to buy organic kale. It's on the dirty dozen list now. They've managed to wreck that. Um, there are all kinds of different greens that you can eat to get your, your magnesium. So let's see what else. This gets to the black tea, which was the question, Helen, that you asked. Um, black tea lowers cortisol levels after stress. They studied people who had been under stress and they found out that the people who drank black tea, they, their cortisol levels lowered more quickly than people who didn't drink black tea. Um, fatty fish like salmon um, and tuna actually is another one, but with tuna you have to be careful because of the mercury content. And you always want to choose wild fish over farmed fish, even if it's the Norwegian farmed fish, and they say, "Oh, it's, you know, it's it's um, it's appropriately raised and it's safe." You have to understand that anything, anytime something isn't wild, anytime it is confined, they probably have had to give them uh, antibiotics to keep them from getting sick because they're in close quarters, and you also don't know what kind of feed they're getting. It could be GMO feed. So I encourage everybody to go for wild fish. And mackerel is another good one. Mackerel is another good one. Stress busters, nuts, pistachios, and almonds. They're high in healthy fat, but you want to eat them in moderation. Um, fat is good, but not tons of it. Um, avocados, also healthy fat and high in potassium. In fact, they have as much potassium as a medium-sized banana. And um, avocados also have protein. And the, the most protein is the really green part that's next to the shell. So when you have an avocado, really scrape that shell. But you can make, you know, a, a little guacamole with, um, and have it with carrots. You don't want to have the chips necessarily because that's not going to be um, in your best interest, but um, avocados are wonderful. Uh, other st stress busters are raw vegetables, and just the act of crunching on something can release some of the tension in your jaw. That might, ki might, might ki sound kind of simple, but when you think about it, it really, you're not just mushing down something that's kind of almost pre-processed, you're really eating the fiber and you're crunching it down. Another stress buster, strawberries. They're high in vitamin C, and vitamin C is very good for handling stress. But with strawberries, you have to make sure they're organic because they're very heavily sprayed. And I kind of touched on <clears throat> buying organic when I was talking, when I mentioned kale. There is uh, Environmental Working Group, EWG.org. They have the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen list, and it's updated every year and that's why this year kale is on the naughty list but what that tells you is the clean 15 tells you which 15 foods you're safest to eat that are conventionally raised and then the dirty dozen those are the 12 that you really 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 don't want to eat that are conventionally raised you want to eat those organic and I buy based on that because everybody watches their food bu budget it is more expensive to eat organic, so I encourage people to pick and choose. You don't have to buy everything organic. Chocolate. 
but make sure it's dark chocolate. 70% or greater is what you want to shoot for. And I have people who say to me, eh, I don't like chocolate, I don't like the way it tastes, I only like milk chocolate. And I admit, dark chocolate for many people is an acquired taste, and what I encourage them to do is, okay, fine, milk chocolate, and then get up to 50% chocolate. Now, here's another way that they trick us. They will say dark chocolate on the label, and on the back, what you want to look for is what's first in the ingredients. Is it sugar and then cocoa or is it cocoa and then sugar? Because dark chocolate can go either way. If it's sugar first and cocoa second, that means it's less than 50% chocolate. If it's cocoa first, then you're over 50%. So when people are trying to transition and acquire a taste for something other than milk chocolate, look for something that starts with, says dark chocolate, but it starts with sugar because then you're not quite to 50% and work your way up. Because you can get 70, 72, 85, um, you can get to 95, which is really hardcore. So my question, is this your breakfast? For many of us it is. Or is this your breakfast? That used to be my breakfast, by the way. Or is this your breakfast? This is my breakfast. This was my breakfast a while ago. I, actually, a while ago, a couple years ago, I don't have those plates anymore. But that's a fried egg on top of avocado with some sauteed spinach and uh, fresh fruit on the left there. Honestly, I would eat, my, my pile of fruit would be smaller nowadays, but that was probably, yeah, more fruit than I should have had, being very honest. And this is a process. I mean, I'm always learning and adjusting. I'm course correcting and changing what I do, but this is a much better breakfast. This is the kind of thing you wanna shoot for. So what would a menu of eating to relieve stress actually look like? This is kind of the ideal, and you could switch things out, but this is just to give you kind of an idea. You want to have some protein. You want to have egg, salmon, mackerel. There's mackerel in a tin in olive oil. It's um, is it Seasons Mackerel. I think it's Seasons Mackerel. I order it online. It's easy. It's there. It's mild. It's not fishy. And I have it on a green salad. I had a salad for breakfast this morning, and you'd be amazed how this, eating this way, it stays with you. You will not be as starving as you are with if you're eating a conventional standard American diet. It levels you out so your sugar isn't going up and then dropping, which makes you hungry and crave stuff again. Um, a quarter of a diced avocado, a green salad with fruit and veggies, and I chop up veggies and I chop up fruit and I put them on mixed greens. I'll throw in you know, dark greens, mescaline greens, um, I'll throw in uh, arugula, which has a nice peppery flavor. Mix it up, and I'll toast some almonds or some, pecan, some pecans. I'll put that on top. Salad does not have to be lettuce, tomato, bleh. You can put everything on it, and you'd be amazed at how good you feel. Okay, lunch, rice and bean mixture. Um, I have a recipe on the website for rice and bean mixture. It's, brown, it's uh, wild rice, lentils, uh, some quinoa and beans and some spices. And I cook it in vegetable broth, a little white wine. You can do the white wine or not, the alcohol cooks off, so it leaves the flavor and the white wine's gone. But, um, and I make a big mess of things. And this makes healthy eating easier too, because you're not cooking from start, from scratch every night. You've got stuff that you can take out, you can heat up, and you can repurpose. Baby carrots and cucumber sticks and hummus, that's a great lunch. And that will stay with you too because you've got wonderful fiber in the rice mixture, you've got wonderful fiber and you've got some sugar in the baby carrots. The hummus has some protein. Dinner, pasture-raised beef or chicken or wild fish, a mixed salad with fruit and veggies. Sometimes I'll have salad twice a day. Or uh, oven roasted veggies, um, last night I did three cookie trays, cookie uh, sheets of veggies, just drizzle olive oil, put some garlic powder and salt and pepper. I have this recipe on my website too. And you just put them on at 400, you turn them a couple times and you've got veggies for days. And you can chop them up and you can put them in an omelet. You can have them cold on a salad. You can heat them up for a side dish, keep them in the fridge. You'll be much less resistant to changing how you eat if it's easier. I'm all about easy. I don't have time to start from scratch all the time either. 
And steam a sweet potato. White potatoes, um, white potatoes turn to sugar, so white potatoes are not great. They have the wonderful purple potatoes now, and they have the wonderful red potatoes too. And uh, sweet potatoes are very good. You can roast them, you can steam them, you can bake them. What about snacks? Sliced organic apple with almond butter. Um, almond butter is my, my nut butter of choice. I don't do peanut butter anymore. First of all, peanuts are not nuts. They're legumes, and they also can have uh, a fungus that can really mess you up if, if, if you're, you're exposed to it. So I don't do peanut butter anymore. Um, snack idea is a handful of pistachios, cashews, or almonds, and I strongly urge you, if you're eating something like that, take a serving out, put it in a bowl, put it on a napkin, and put the rest away, because if you sit down on the couch and start eating out of the bag, you're going to eat more than you really need to eat to feel comfortable. And, and try not eating until you're full, too. That's a whole mindset. Um, not eating until you're full and not eating certainly until you're stuffed. Another thing, um, toasted almond bread with jam. I have a, 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 me, a, um, a menu, a recipe for almond bread on the website. And I toast it, and I'll put almond butter. Sometimes I just put jam on it, but so, sometimes I'll put almond butter and, um, and jam, and it's delicious. But jam has sugar. But I don't do jam sugar. I do jam that has, um, that ha is only, there's a crofters that's a fruit spread, and it doesn't have any added sugar. So if you're going to choose a jam, and it doesn't have to be this thick, you know, you can just have a little taste, then go with something that, that doesn't have the, the, the sugar. Go for a fruit spread, is what I should say. And I will ch thank you, Helen, for telling me that. I, I will change that to fruit spread, which is what I should okay. say. That's a good idea. I'll change it. Well, we were paying attention earlier when you were saying that the, the pressed juice was yeah. sugar. So Yes, that's good. I like it. I like it a lot. There'll be a test at the end, by the way. <laughs> you can't leave. <laughs> so we all want a treat. So the recipes that were in the handouts are a cookie recipe, and that has no added sugar. It's got the xylitol and that doesn't give you a glucose bump and also a chia recipe. Chia pudding is really tasty. You can make a, a chocolate version of it. You can make um, a vanilla version of it. You can make an almond version of it just by changing the flavorings. And um, the, the, the cookie recipe, you can add chocolate <coughs> pieces to that and make it kind of a chocolate chip recipe. We all need a treat. The thing is to relearn how real food tastes because what the processed food companies have taught us in pretty much our lifetimes is how they want us to believe food tastes. And they want us to believe food tastes like salt, sugar, and bad fat. And we have to relearn that food tastes like vegetables and meats and fish and grains and greens and real food and that is a tough one there's an ad on tv it's for um, a fast food place and it's this one lovely woman with a southern drawl and she holds this food and it's fabulous looking but one day i was struck by how there's nothing green in sight it was all beige and if you if you look at the food that's out there that's being pushed on us unless there's food coloring added and again, check your ingredients. Red dye number two. No, they don't use that anymore. But um, yeah, so look for color on your plate. So 60 plus names of sugar, we talked about that. Please visit my website, thinstronghealthy.com. Recipes and their updates for your health. And you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Cheryl A. Major. I'm always posting interesting articles that I find I'm posting recipes, I'm posting posts, <laughs> just trying to help everybody find healthy things easily. Um, on my website now, I have a giveaway. It's how to end your emotional eating. So if emotional eating is a trigger for you, I encourage you to just grab that. So questions? Any questions at all? Yes? So where do you buy xylitol? I used to be able to get it at Whole Foods. Um, I haven't checked recently because I bought, I think I bought a five pound bag the last time. Um, I was buying, Xyla was the brand that I was buying there. 
and then they stopped carrying it. And they might have it again. It comes in like a, a coffee can almost, kind of a, a, a tall can. But they said, you know, you can order on, on Amazon. They don't care if they carry it or if you buy it from Amazon now because, you know, they're together. Um, so I've been, I've been buying it from, um, from Amazon. But I do have a, a link to xylitol through Amazon on the website. So it's in the sugar area? It's in the sugar area. Yes, it is in the sugar area. Yes, that is a fact. And it doesn't have that like, stevia? It doesn't. That no. Case, which, no. Like, I can taste that. Like when I'll get yogurt that yeah. has that in it. It's that tang that's it's it's like tang. on your tongue. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah. And no, no. I have it in. I start my morning with a cup of green tea with some light coconut milk that I get at Whole Foods, and like a quarter teaspoon, I would guess, of of um, I almost said stevia of xylitol. And no, you don't taste it. You don't taste the tang. It it really manifests like sugar, and in the um, in the cookies, it it manifests like sugar. You don't taste any kind of a weird taste but it doesn't give you that glucose bump, so it's really good. And it's one for one with exchange for sugar? I mean, like, when you're cooking, when you're baking with sugar? Um, I tend to experiment with that, and I tend to use less because I'm trying to take um, old tried and true recipe, tried and, tried and true recipes, and make them healthier, which means for me, I'm going to be reducing mentally the amount of sugar. So that translates into using less xylitol. Um, so I would say. Can I interrupt for a second? Yeah, so you're sure. saying you're trying to make it less sweet anyway? I'm trying to make it less sweet anyway. So I'm, I'm trying to translate. Uh, if I'm going to make something, I'm going to make it with less sugar because yeah. the, the recipes that I used to love, they're so sweet. When you get used to eating this way, it's just too sweet. So I would say try a quarter of what's in there, but then it gets a little, um, if, you, if it's not an exact, I, I know you can use an exact exchange, okay? You can use an exact exchange. I, I encourage people to try to use less. Let me just say that, that, that simplifies it. Um, because when you reduce the amount of sugar, it messes with the consistency a little bit. So you have to put in another egg or a little more oil or something like that. So it's kind of a trial and error thing, but, um, but well worth it. Um, and there are, there are recipes that you can find that might have um, stevia or might have agave, and you can switch those out too. It doesn't have to be you know grandma's molasses cookie recipe that has like two pounds of sugar in it. So I, I do that too if I get, um, I have, I have a, a recipe book that um, there, there's a tart in there that's really good. Um, and I, I took that and I, I changed, I think they used agave, no they used maple syrup in that. And I switched that out for, um, for xylitol. It was really good. And I think I did a little less than what they called for. And then you can kind of mess with it. You can kind of play with it a little bit and, and experiment. So, any other questions? When you said you had the mackerel, you said the name of the stuff. Yeah, it's Seasons. It's called Seasons. Seasons mackerel. And how did you eat that? You like had it like, I mean, the mackerel comes out of the can and then it, be, and it goes with what? What do you have it with? I just break it up and I put it on my salad. Oh, on a salad. On my salad. Yep, and then I, I put a salad dressing that I make. I make a salad dressing, and again, the recipe's on the website. With, um, I buy, I go out and I buy a Good Seasons jar with the markers on it. I throw away the packet, because you don't want to eat that stuff. But the jar is fabulous, and it gives you the vinegar, and then you fill it with water, and then you fill it with oil, and then I put in mustard, just, I just squeeze as much as I want in there. And I put in about maybe a half a teaspoon of minced garlic and I shake it up, done. There's no sugar, there's no xanthan gum for texture because you don't need it. It doesn't cost you five or six dollars and it's delicious. I have two, I rotate them. I rotate them. I make my, my, my stuff all the time. What kind of mustard? Depends. I like Brad's Organic Dijon Mustard. But I also sometimes, I like to mix it up. Sometimes I'll just get, um, I try to stay with organic, 
but yeah, you know, depends because there's not all that much in there. Um, but Brad's organic, I like a lot. Um, I like the the whole grain mustard too. It gives a little different texture, just to keep it interesting. And you know, if if you like um, anchovy paste, you can put some anchovy paste in your salad dressing. You can shake that up. There's so many ways you can make it cheap, fast, easy, and delicious and healthy. And that's what I'm trying to share with people is how to do that. And it can be fun too, you know? I mean, it's, it's really, it opens up a whole new world. And, and there's this, there are these places, there, there are five of them, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, they're called Blue Zones. All over the world, there's um, Sardinia, there's uh, Loma Linda, California, there is um, Okinawa, Japan, there's one down in, I think, Costa Rica, and I'm forgetting one or two. But they, the people in the Blue Zones, they live to be 100 or more. And they're not warehoused, they're not on walkers, they're not in wheelchairs, they're active, they're social, some of them still work. They're not and highly stressed. <laughs> I'm sorry? They're not highly stressed. They're not highly stressed, but they also eat so that they keep their inflammation low and they stay active. And what they, they're able to do is they're able to push their declining time of their life till the very end of their life. They don't get their AARP invitation when they're heading toward 50 and figure it's all over. I mean, I had somebody I was talking to and she said, you know, I'm 56, I figure it's all over. I was like, oh. <laughs> God, no, don't say that. You know, you have to, and that's another thing. I could do another whole hour, and I won't, I promise. But I could do another whole hour on don't let them condition you to get old. We are programmed to expect this to hurt and that to hurt. And then it's reinforced by how we eat that gives us aches and pains. It's like, oh, yeah, I know. I'm 56, and it's all over. And you don't want to do that. So you have to resist. You have to resist and you have to advocate for yourself. But you can make, you have such power. You have such control that you don't know about because they don't want you to know. And I'm on a mission to help people understand how they can take control of their mental and their physical health by changing how they eat. Any other questions? Um, have you looked at the Groton Natural Market for like the xylitol stuff or something? Everybody I have. Knows. I have not. I know the Groton. Um, I know the Groton Market. Um, I live in Westford, so okay. I'm not often out there. Um, so I don't do that. But but I. Well, especially if you, like you said, you get a can of it. Yeah, you know, I bought the. It, like I said, I bought the five pound bag. Yeah. yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. There's another place called Roots that's um, organic stuff and healthy eating stuff. Is that in Groton too? No, it's um, it's over by the Lemon Street, uh, Fitchburg Airport. Oh, really? Um, if you take the exit off Route 2 toward the airport, it's on the road that goes right along where the airport is. And it, it looks like it's in a little strip mall that, that's yeah. uh, next to a, a Fastenal, you know, tools place or something. And you walk in the place and it, it starts off looking like a little restaurant. You can get lunch really? and everything. But then if you take a left, you go suddenly into this whole organic shopping place where they got organic groceries and vitamins and um, whatever. And it's called Roots? Yeah. Okay, thank they're you. On the, I think they're on the website. You can look okay. All right. They okay. might have xylitol. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I breezed through it like, you know, a week or so ago and I need to get some uh, alpha lipoic acid stuff. And yeah. I'm amazed at all the different things they have there. I was like, whoa, I didn't even know all this was back here. I thought it was just a organic, you know, smoothie, you know, lunch yeah, yeah, place. Yeah, a little bar. Yeah. yeah, like a lunch place. They yeah. had healthy sandwiches and roll-ups and all that stuff. Uh -huh. And then when I went to the left, it was like, oh, all this other stuff's back here and everyone went into it. So. Oh, interesting. I'll have to check it out. It's Thanks. a great little spot. I live right near it. You do? Yeah. Is it? Well, I've never heard of it. See, I learned something tonight, too. <laughs> this is great. This is what I love. It's, it's like, and this is why I say it's a process. It's like you think you're done. You're not done. You always learn new stuff and, and talking to people and sharing ideas. It's wonderful. Yeah. So just another follow-up question on this emotional sure. eating stuff. I'm guilty of that, um, especially lately. My husband's fighting cancer and stuff, so um, uh, I sort of find I'm absorbing food and I don't realize it until suddenly I don't feel good. And I'm like, my stomach feel, feels like, uh-oh, I've, I've eaten too much. You know, you sort of can tell when you've had too much. Yeah. Like, why did I just keep eating, you know, and then I know oh, that's not good, I can tell why you just kept eating. Yes. Um, you know, it's not even like I'm eating to enjoy the food, I'm just eating to have something to eat, right. something to do with my hands or something, and next thing you know, I've eaten too much. Yes. And 
that point, the question is, what are you doing at that point? You know, like deep breathing or something to sort of like break the cycle kind of thing. I don't when know you've that. eaten too, after you've eaten too much or to keep yourself from after eating too much? After you've eaten too much. At and all of a sudden you realize, uh-oh. <laughs> I've messed up my body, and I'm not going to do that. It's yeah, oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah I'm not going to do that stuff, but is there well, something else I can do? Like maybe drink some tonic water or something to help I was digest things a little faster yeah, or something. Yeah, I was going to say, um, a, two things that come to mind is, is have sparkling water, because I find that, I mean, my go-to when I had an upset stomach was Coca-Cola. Mm. That was like my, I used to call it my medicine. Not anymore. <laughs> now now <laughs> it's more my killer. <laughs> But yeah, I, I would go for sparkling water. And another thing, um, activated charcoal from coconut, I always keep that in the house as kind of an anti-gas thing. If you, if you struggle, if you've, you've eaten and you feel bloated, the charcoal absorbs. And if, What's if, it called again? It's activated charcoal from, from coconut um, shells, and it's organic. Um, okay. If you, if you want to give me your, your email address, I'll, I'll, I'll email you. Um, what I have at home. Okay. After after we're done, I'm happy to help you out with that. I don't think I have that on my website right now, but I'm happy to put it up there. But um, yeah, and, and that yeah. also, if you're going to eat bad food, and I, I say that you know, from a purist point point of view, if you're going to go out and you're going to a, you know, you're going to have a, a few, you're going to a party, you're going to have a few drinks, you're going to eat food that's not necessarily good. It's, I've read where activated charcoal is also a good thing because it absorbs some of that stuff rather than letting it um, you know, be absorbed into your system. Okay. So activated charcoal is always kind of a, a good go-to thing. Yeah, and, and then you said, what was it, tonic water? Or? Yeah, good sparkling water. I'm a big fan of the soda stream machines because you never run out. Well, you can run out of the cartridge, but you keep an extra one there, mm -hmm. and it's so easy. And I think, for me, I've, I've found it to be very economical. So, and it, it, you know, you don't want to use the flavor packs that they sell. Yeah, no, I don't do that Those are junk, though. That's like the, you know, like the, um, the salad dressing packet. But you can be creative. And crushing berries is really good. Crush berries and put that in and stir it around. It gives it a nice flavor, and you've got some texture and fiber in there, too. Thank you. So I drink bubbly water all the time. Yep. It's not bad for you? I have read where too much carbonation can leach calcium from your bones and contribute to osteoporosis. I haven't researched it to be absolutely sure, but I would just say, you know, if you drink a ton of it, I would just do the Google and I would just double check that. I like it too. I try to remind, in fact, I got it right here. I try to remind myself to drink plain water as well. So just check that out. I'm not an authority so on Google, that. You get all these wacko <laughs> things, and, and, and they're all saying opposite stuff. It seems you like find the one, you, you, the answer you want, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that is true. That is true. You can down, go down the rabbit hole with that. Um, there are a couple of different um, sites. There is, uh, an, is it NIH National or NHI, National Health Institute? I'm trying to think. National Health Institute. Yeah, that's probably a pretty good go-to. I think they're pretty credible. Um, WebMD maybe, but then you get into the traditional allopathic thing and that gets a little dicey in my world. But um, yeah, I, I've, I've read that a couple of times. Am I sure, Jean? No, honestly. And I'll tell you if I don't know something, I'm not sure. Do some of your recipes have um things to do with goji berries. I've heard they're really good, like blueberries to eat, but um, I tried them one time, but I wasn't cooking them or using them properly. I mean, they had to soak them or something, and I don't know. Do you have any recipes that deal with them? I don't. I have not cooked with goji berries. I have not. Um, I've bought some dried ones and eat, eaten those. That's what I did. <laughs> but, but dried fruit is, that dried fruit's tough because it's very, very high in sugar very high in sugar, so you want to keep dried fruit to a minimum. So, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Um, please take a bookmark, then you've got a way to keep in touch with me. Um, you're welcome to um, just go to my website, and if you grab that emotional eating, you'll, you'll get updates from me as I, as I publish new information. So I'd love to help you on your journey. Thank you.